focus uh, I, I guess i guess i should have told him i told you so could it not me straight out of focus I told you, bro. <laughs> um, God. let's get into these things man we're gonna do a little bit of something different um than what we usually do um not too much different but we're gonna kind of this year we're gonna go not only for the atlanta Falcons, but we're gonna do um the opposing team also the key to victory for those um and for the fans from you know those teams um we want to kind of be able to uh give you guys a little something something so we're going to start with Ju, um give his three keys to victory for not only the atlanta five well let's we'll just start with the falcons the first and then we'll go to the Eagles. okay so y'all know i love three keys to victory i always end up with about five or six keys to victory <laughs> but i'm gonna try to limit it to three so for atlanta our keys to victory in this game. First off, K Styles is gonna know what you putting on the t-shirt. I'm gonna say it in my K Styles voice. Run. Okay. <laughs> Finish it. You me to, you, say you it, K Styles. Say it. Run the damn ball. That was in my keys to victory every time last year. Go back to heavy hitter season one. Run the ball. Run the ball. If you run the ball 20 to 25 times, you shorten the game, you keep the opposing offense on the sideline, and they're not coming back. Last year, we had a couple games where we had leads. Last year against Dallas, we had leads in all of the games early. Uh, last year against Chicago, if you run the ball, even if your defense is terrible, if you run the ball, you shorten the game. The clock is what matters once you, once you got the lead, and that's been Atlanta's problem since the Super Bowl run the ball if you run the ball you kill the clock i don't care how good tom brady or any quarterback is they can't do nothing once that clock hits zero zero so keep them on the sideline so in this game run that ball 20 to 25 times um keys to victory number two in this game motion on offense we know that the mm. eagles have a great defensive line so it's going to be very important for misdirection if you go back to that play where Kyle Pitts had that 27 yard gain in the flats I believe it was mm -hmm. a Russell Gage coming across like on a mm -hmm. uh, jet sweep and yeah. Kyle Pitts ran the other way he went behind the line and ran opposite of the way that the line was moving so guys eyes were going everywhere they didn't know who had the ball what was happening so misdirection is very important in this game when you have Ooh, a good okay. defensive line that you're facing you have to have misdirection last year we know that Dirk Cutter was very cookie co uh, cookie cutter with his offense. It wasn't enough motion. If you look at the teams in the modern NFL, the Sean McVay's, the uh, Kyle Shanahan's, and the West Coast offense, even if you go back and look at the Tennessee offense, that motion is key because it keeps – you don't know where the key in it. Your eyes are going everywhere. And the, the Philadelphia Eagles have young a young secondary, young linebackers, so they're very aggressive, but they don't know where the ball is. So they're going to have to freeze. And when you freeze that one moment or take that one false step, you're beat already. Mm -hmm. You can't recover. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very important in this game that if they're trying to tee off on Matt Ryan or they're rushing upfield because we know they have a really good defensive line, the way that you slow down that that pass, uh, pass rush is running the ball in misdirection because they're not going to know what player has the ball. And Matt Ryan is really good in play action of hiding the football. So they don't know if he didn't mm -hmm. kept it, if he handed it to the running back, if he handed it to the guy that's coming on the jet sweep. We want to keep those guys' heads spinning. We want their eyes going all over the field, not being able to key in on who has the football. And then my third key to victory in this game, and this is going to be a really, really simple one, is complementary football. If we play compl uh, complementary, uh, complementary football in this game, we win the game. I say it every year. There's two, three, four plays in the game where you're either going to win the game or you're going to lose the game. So that's a block field goal, a block punt, um, a fumble, a key interception, complimentary football. If you have the lead, run the ball. Um, smart challenges, because we've seen last year where our coaches were just doing dumb things, like challenging plays mm -hmm. where you could clearly see the guy was out of bounds or 
the guy, you know, whatever. It wasn't a good challenge. So in this game, it's going to it's going to have to be complimentary football. Play smart in this game. And if we do those three things, I really think that the Falcons can win this game really easily because the Eagles are a very young team. They have a new coaching staff, a new coaching staff as well. And they have a young quarterback. So I really think in this game, the Falcons can win this game handily if we just do those small things. So run the ball on def- uh, on offense, Arthur Smith, motion on offense, keep those guys guessing at what we're doing, and three, complimentary football. We do those three things, we should win this game handily. And I'm going to kick it over to K-Styles. Yes, sir. You already know. You already know. All right, so K Styles key three keys to victory. Okay, so I know a lot of people are kind of worried about this offensive line matchup against this defensive line matchup. I know you we we're kind of going to hear it all the way to game time. There's one way to neutralize that, and that's to get the ball out of Matt Ryan's hand with the quick pass again. Mm. That's what you must do. Like I said, two step drops, little hooks. Digs, whatever, screen passes, whatever. Get the running backs involved in the passing game. That's part of the quick passing game. Like you said, that's the only way you're going to build the confidence of this offensive line. Like you said, with Jalen Mayfield starting, with uh, Matt Hennessy starting. You got to get the ball out of Matt Ryan's hands in less than three seconds. You got the tight ends to do it. Two. You must, and I repeat, you must get off the field on third down. You must. Because the thing about, like I said, with Jay, like with Jalen, Jalen Hurts, like we know he doesn't have the experience. We know he's a mobile quarterback, but do not give him the confidence to play well. Get him off the field on third down. Three. And this is going to go to the coaching side with DPs, which I know he will do. <laughs> you must. I repeat, you must. I'm going to say it one more time. You must. <laughs> <laughs> you must do different things on defense. Don't get caught doing the same shit. Like I said, we can blitz. But blitz from different spots to where you can confuse him. Mm. Because Jalen Hurts right now is not a guy that's going to be reading all three mm. phases of the field. So you want you you, you want your pre-snap to be different from your post-snap. Because that's how you create turnovers. Bam! That's all I got to say on that. Yeah, um... Hey man, you guys, <laughs> um, you pretty much covered a lot. Um, my my three keys is um, pretty. Mine is obviously based on a lot of chemistry. So like chemistry for me, it starts with the offensive line and establishing the run. All right, like you said, you got to establish the run. Um, but instead of the run being the focus of uh, the running backs being the focus, I, the offensive line is the focus for me at uh, the running game. So it's like in, in order for you to really not only keep Matt Ryan healthy, um, but if we're going to be a successful team this year, the offensive line has to come together fast. And the fastest way possible is with the running game. Like you said, you got to extend the games um, when you got a lead, you got to be able to extend games and not give them opportunities to get in rhythm. Um, whether it's a young quarterback or a veteran quarterback, these quarterbacks are being taught by, you know, some real intelligent, smart offensive coordinators who've been in the league for quite some time and they have a history of you know, doing well. So it's like in order for that, for the Falcons to be successful, they got to establish the run game with their offensive line. Number two, for me is I think this goes into chemistry also. Well, it does go into chemistry, um, but 
You got to cut down on the early penalties. That, that's first and foremost. We cannot get into a penalty game early in because we got to extend. But the fans got. We got to get the fans off of this this negative vibe. So in order for them to not get caught up in, oh man, we were just gonna suck. Oh, here we go. Here we go again. Here we, I don't want to hear the here we goes again. So we cannot come out with a lot of penalties early and. A lot of that goes to nerves. Um, so for me, the two guys that I'm going to keep an eye on is Hennessy and Mayfield for those for those reasons. Um, because the nerves. Um, once they establish a run, establish that short passing game, like Kevin was saying, um, it all goes up. It goes uphill from there. So it's like for me, um, cutting down on early penalties and the third one. And Kevin kind of went into it, but getting Matt Ryan to, to a rhythm. Matt Ryan gets in a rhythm, you already lost the game. I'm just like, you in for a long, long, long game if Matt Ryan is in a rhythm. That's the last thing that you want from any quarterback. I right, Matt Ryan's caliber is to get them in the rhythm because you can send blitzes at Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is one of the best quarterbacks under pressure. Him and Tom Brady is damn near impossible yeah. to stop yeah. when they have time in the pocket. So, only thing that works right doesn't get you an Ethernet cord connected. Oh, I'm about to say, I thought I was. Like, I thought I was. Nah, I thought nah, I was nah. Here, nah. I thought nah, I was. Nah, 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 she she had to bring my feng shui candle right quick. Oh, okay. So I, 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 yeah, I was like, I, was, I know I ain't been abducted by aliens and or she something. Talking, she, she talking shit about my computer <laughs> being shit right now, so you know how that go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it goes into, like I said, Matt Ryan um, establishing him, uh, getting him in rhythm. So it's like, for me, man, um, it's, it's all about Maddie Ice, all right? We can keep saying that over and over again. We're going to do um, the Eagles, and we're going to go at Jew. Going to start it out. Um, now let's just start out with Kevin, then we go to Jew. Um, okay. As far as the Eagles, uh, keys to victory. You said you said said start the out Eagles. with the three keys for the Eagles. The Eagles, yes, for okay. the Eagles. Okay. Okay. So, if I'm an Eagles fan, and I'm looking at three keys to victory against the Falcons. The number one thing I want to do is I got to roll out Jalen Hurts. I got to roll him out. Mm -hmm. I have to roll him out. I have to do something like that. Um, because what you want to do is you want to simplify the plays for him. You want to simplify the calls for him. But you want to put him in a position where he doesn't have to think too much. Because remember, Jalen Hurts went through the whole, okay, he's going to start here. Then he got benched. So we don't know how that relationship with that team is going. And mm -hmm. we see how how crazy that coach is over there. It's on some ridiculous shit. Um, so I wanna I wanna make it easier. Like, like it's the same thing we said about Matt Ryan. You want Jalen Hurst to get in that rhythm. You want him to get outside the pocket, use his athleticism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second is um special teams. Uh, uh mm. Jalen Jalen Rager, he's going to like I said, you're Ooh. going like I said, you're in order for the Eagles to beat the Falcons, the special teams gonna have to take over. They're gonna they're gonna have to get some good field position to where you'll have confidence in Jalen Hurst to do his thing. Now, like I said, I would normally go with defense. Like I said, everybody knows the defensive line. I'm not even gonna go with defense like this. My third key for the Eagles will be Goddard and Earps are going to have to be your main primary focus. Mm -hmm. Because those are your big bodies. And you want to get your big bodies involved as much as possible. Because they got a lot of small receivers. And that bubble run coverage against them guys might not be a good idea. They might not be successful at it like that. So you want to attack the middle of the field. That's where the most question is going to be at as far as the defense, Falcon defense. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to end it with that. 
I agree. All right, so keys to victory for the Eagles. If I'm the Eagles coaching staff, first off, y'all know where I'm going. Defensive line. K Styles didn't go there, but I'm going there because y'all know that that's how I get down. <laughs> it all starts in them trenches. And if you can't block, Go ahead, K Style. No, no, I'm about to say, you see that alley oop I just Yeah, passed? I see. I think I appreciate it, <laughs> man. You threw me that alley oop. <laughs> hey, you threw me that alley, and I'm in the Blake Griffin this thing. Hey, <laughs> look, that defensive line, man, it start with Fletcher Cox and them boys up front. We knew last year from the Falcons O line, we we're known as a finesse and soft team. So I want to see if Arthur Smith and his coaching staff has toughened up this Atlanta Falcons team because a lot of teams are walking into our building saying this is the same soft 4-12 and 12 team from last year. So they're going to come in and try to punch us in the mouth. And they know that uh, their secondary can't hold up. They can't hold Calvin Ridley. They can't hold Hayden Hurst. They can't hold Russell Gage. They can't hold nobody man-to-man on our team. I don't care who it is. Big play mm-hmm. Slay is not trying to see Ridley one-on-one. None of their linebackers can see Kyle Pitts. So they're going to have to muck the game up. So if I'm their defensive coordinator, I'm saying Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, even the linebackers. I don't want those linebackers in coverage. So I'm blitzing. If we remember the the game last uh, year, the first game of the season against Seattle, what did they do with Jamal Adams? Blitzed him pretty much the whole game. You didn't see him in coverage. And when you Mm -hmm. did see him in coverage, he was getting burned by whoever he was trying to cover. So in this game, it's the same thing with the Eagles. First key to victory is pressure, Matt Ryan, Stop that running game and make Matt Ryan have to pass the ball. Uh, try to get a turnover, strip sack, fumble. Uh, try to punk uh, these rookies that we have up front. Hennessy's a first time starter. Try to punk them. Try to punk um, Jalen Mayfield because they've watched tape of our preseason. They've seen these guys getting bullied. So they're coming in to try to bully us up front. So if I'm the Eagles defensive coordinator and the head coach, I'm saying the Falcons are soft. Let's go in there and get after them. Uh, key to victory number two, if I'm Jalen Hurts, it's the improvising. It's the play after the play, all for them. Because we know that Dean Pease is going to blitz. They know that Dean P- uh, Pease likes to blitz. The thing about it is that can be dangerous um, on our side as the Falcons when you have a mobile quarterback. Because sometimes you can run yourself out of a play. Meaning if you blitz and he realizes what side you're blitzing from, sometimes you can leave a gap where he can take off up the field and there's nobody left, especially if we're in man coverage and you're blitzing because the cornerbacks, their backs are turned. They're running down the field with the receivers. So if you blitz and you don't guess right and Jalen Hurts realizes, you know, where the, the pressure is coming from, he can run right through that open gap and get a good 20 to 30 yards because everybody's back is turned to him. They're not, you know, they're running with the receiver. So in this game, we know that our Falcons have struggled the last couple of years against mobile quarterbacks. That's another thing. So. If I'm the Eagles uh, offensive coordinator, I'm telling Jalen Hurts, if the play break down or if they blitz you and you see a gap or a crease where you can run through it, first play read, because they're not going to expect Jalen Hurts, as K Styles was saying, to read, you know, first, second, first read, second read, third read. He's not that type of quarterback yet. He doesn't, he's not able to go through his progressions like Matt Ryan, sit back in the pocket. So they're not going to rely on him to sit back in the pocket and try to read where we're coming from because they know that Dean P his scheme is too uh, sophisticated for him to figure that out. So they're going to say first read, it's going to be a lot of RPO game, just like they had with Nick Foles. He's the linebacker. You pull that ball, you throw it across the middle to Zach Earps up the middle or uh, Goddard up the middle or to one of the running backs out of the backfield. And that's going to be their game plan. It's going to be a very simple offense. They're actually going to try to do what we're doing as the Falcons. They're going to try to shorten this game because they don't want to get into a shootout with us. They can't outscore us. So in this game, they're going to try to muck this game up and make it an ugly football game. Um, The third key to victory, if you're the Eagles, K-Styles hit it right on the head. Special teams or turnovers. They need to win the turnover battle. So whether they get an interception, a defensive touchdown, um, a return punt for, you know, a huge return punt or huge uh, kickoff return, they need to score in a different way because their offense is, uh, isn't high power. So they can't score with us. So they have to shorten the field. That's a must for the Eagles. And that's pretty much the three keys that I have for the Eagles. If they're going to win this game, they have to win the turnover back. If they lose this turnover, get good field position, it's no way I can see them beating the Falcons because we're too high power 
on offense, and Matt Ryan's a veteran in this game. We know that he's a MVP. He has all of the accolades, and we know that Jalen Hurts is still wet behind the ears, breath smelling like Similac still. So, <laughs> so in this game, I'm not too worried about him, and I'm not worried about their offense. Their, their offense is going to be very vanilla, so don't be surprised. They're a defensive-led team, and I'll leave it at that. I'm kind of going real quick. Um, you guys are pretty much dead on it. Um, the first two for me, um, obviously, you got to get Jalen Hurts into a rhythm. Like what? That's that's. I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of him. I, I actually thought it was a complete reach to even draft him in second. He shouldn't have been a first three round quarterback. I'm just gonna be real. Um, he shouldn't have been that. He's just he just does not have the arm talent for for one the arm talent. Um, I think he's a bright guy. I think he has tremendous athleticism. Um, but this is the NFL. Everybody is athletes in here, from the offensive lineman to the defensive lineman to even the kicker. We can see kickers out here catching, you know, guys like Cordero Patterson in the open field. So these guys are athletes. I mean, do we got to bring up Young Way Koo? We, we we see see what him do. Um, with his crazy kicks and his like like I said, he's an athlete. He he gets on tackling guys. Um, also, so like. These guys, everybody's an athlete. So it's like in order to get him the confidence that he needs in the NFL is to get him in the rhythm. And he can't, he cannot turn the ball over. You got to take care of that ball. So if you um, want to help him gain confidence, you got to make him comfortable. And making him comfortable is not having him throw the ball 30 times. If he throw the ball over 30 times in this game, the Falcons are going to, they look that man gonna be hurt because this team is fast and the first time i've said this in quite some time they're fast and they're physical you don't want no parts of foyer and Deion jones when they are free to roam and do what they do best career uh, like they're going to be able to create havoc like this is what magnus said we need to create chaos these guys are going to be Rushing the passer, they're going to be in coverage. They're going to be punching the ball out like Foyer does. Like they got free reigns to be them, and you got free reigns to be a runner as a defense or a, a, a linebacker. Especially with Dion, like I said, I feel sorry for Jalen. Uh, Jalen hurts <laughs> when he got uh, if he's trying to run away from Dion. You ain't run away from Dion, and and Foyer is no slouch himself. So. You got not only Dion, you got Grady Jarrett chasing you. Look, like I said, y'all gonna have to slow this game down, run the ball, play keep away with those quick passes, and don't get them into a rhythm. Don't you know? Don't let Atlanta Falcons get into a rhythm. Um, it's it's like I said, it's gonna be difficult for the Eagles to win this game if they get in the passing. If they get in the passing, they're not gonna beat the Falcons. The second one, this is real easy. Um, Fletcher Cox got to come out. He he got to come out and set the tempo. You can't let uh, a second year and a and a rookie, you know, hold you down. You got to come out, establish yourself as a dominant defensive lineman in this league. You're playing against, um, yeah, you got a, a guy like Chris Lindstrom. And I think he's a I think he's a Pro Bowl talent, but um, again. Hennessy is still young. He's still a young center. So you got to bring it. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I, I know for sure Grady Jarrett ain't going to be held by no second year or uh, a rookie defense lineman. So Fletcher Cox, this is all on you. You got to show up, get at least a sack, and you got to get, you got to live in the Falcons backfield. At this, that's, that's just, in order for y'all to win, you got to set the tempo. And third for me is I think this is probably the most important for them. Um, they linebackers is ass, man. I'm just going to straight up say it like that. They, they are straight up ass. I don't know any of these guys. I got to do some film work on them. Um, but I look. I thought we uh, look. I know Dorian Etheridge, but these dudes, I don't. I can't, look. Just, just look at these names. Like, let, let, let's be real. 
Do you know uh Jannard Avery? Do you know Eric Wilson? I may have heard of Eric Wilson. I'm yeah. not exactly sure. I, I may he's have heard of Eric Wilson. Huh? Yeah, he's the only one. He played with the Vikings. He's yeah. the only veteran on that. Okay, on that all right, line that's right. A yeah. And Alex Singleton. All right, come on, bro. Like, you got these guys covering a guy <laughs> like not even I'm not even saying Kyle Pitts. You got this guy on Hayden Hurst. You got these guys on Hayden Hurst. Man, look, they linebackers better. They, look, they better eat some Wheaties. They better put on some magic cloak. They better they put some, you know, sprinkle some magic dust on them or something <laughs> because they're going to get ate up all day long if they can't cover Hayden Hurst. And I'm not even going to bring up Kyle Pitts because if you can't cover Hayden Hurst, you damn sure ain't going to cover uh, Kyle Pitts. So they linebackers got to bring it. And those are my three keys, man. And, um, you got anything else to kind of add to that? Uh, we'll just go on to the new, the latest news on this guy. I got one more thing I want to add, uh, Mike. And this is just a guy to look out for for the Falcons. And he's not a, a well-known name because he's a rookie. Kenneth Gainwell, the running back for the Whoa. Eagles. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that K-Styles would love because he's a guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield. And he's one of those guys that a lot of people don't know about. But coming out of college, he was a really good running back. And I thought that the Falcons should really take a look at him in the draft. So don't be surprised if you see a guy named Kenneth Gainwell doing some things out there on the field. And if they want to have any chance at winning this game, him and Miles Sanders are going to have to be the reason. Uh, them Those guys running the ball and catching the ball out of the backfield. Good luck with that because we have, the, to me, the best linebacker core in the league. I don't right. think you're catching too many passes against Deion Jones in the flats and doing something with it or foyer because we got some great athletes and Michael Walker and these guys, we have mm-hmm. great athletes. So I think this is just a mismatch for the Eagles in general. I don't see them getting it done. But Kenneth Gainwell is a guy that a lot of people might not know as a household name, but he's a guy that can really play. Oh yeah, I want to add one more thing too. And I'm surprised I didn't say this earlier. But the number one thing the Falcons need to do, seven points, not three, seven points. For, hold on, I ain't said this in a while. For 60 minutes, (laughs) we can't be kicking field goals. That's the main thing. We cannot be kicking field goals out here. If we kick and field goals, like I said, especially against a team like Philadelphia, even though, like I said, we're expecting to beat the shit out of them. If we kick and field goals against Philadelphia, see, now you're bringing them closer into the game. Now they're going to have the confidence to say, I'm going to make the play. So Falcons must score touchdowns. They cannot. I don't want to hear Young Way Koo's name seven times this game. I need to hear him about twice. Right. That's good. (laughs) 